five, five six, six, seven, eight. Hey guys. Hey. It's Bryn. I said hey again. I have to redo it. Okay. I say that every time. Five, five six, six, seven, eight. Hey guys. Hello. It's Bryn. And Kelsey. And welcome back to Out of Out of Love. Welcome to our show. Five, six, seven, eight. Say it with me. Out of Love. Welcome back, you guys. Welcome to another episode. Today we have a good episode planned because we've been getting a lot of comments about how did you guys move out like at such a young age? Like, how did you make it work financially? And today we're just going to get into it and tell you our personal experiences on how we made it work Mm -hmm. and hopefully it can help some of you. Yeah, it's really scary like growing up and becoming independent from your family or your friends or from whoever. So I feel like we could have used somebody giving us advice. So hopefully this can help you guys. Yes, agreed. Um. I was lucky because my mom gave me a lot of good advice. And so I felt pretty prepared leaving the house. I feel like I left the house a lot younger than most people. Hi, Charlie. Hello, Charlie. <laughs> um, personally, I actually moved out at 17. So that was like really crazy for me because I was in high school still. Mm-hmm. And because of all the COVID rules and all that crazy stuff, like in North Carolina, um, all schools were shut down. Yeah. And so I really wanted a senior year and my mom wanted that for me too. And so I was able to move back to Arizona and like go to school my senior year. I literally did my senior year by myself. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I had to be independent, like really fast. Yeah, you were kind of forced into it. But yeah. Like- I feel like it It all happened for a reason, like it was supposed to happen. It did. I'm like glad that I did it yeah. and I was able to support myself, which, you know, I'm like very grateful for. Yeah. But, and I feel like ever since then, I just kind of figured it out by myself. Like, you know what I mean? I've yeah. like moved houses a bajillion times and yeah. now we're in this house together and I love this yeah, house. I'm very happy with where we're yeah. at. But I feel like your experience was a little bit different. Yeah. So tell me about that. My experience was kind of all over the place. I never really thought I would move out. Like my older siblings stayed in the house until, I don't know, my brother moved when he went to boot camp. My oldest brother moved, stayed in our house until he was like 22. So it was never like you have to move out at a certain age. It was just like, once I reached a certain age, I was obviously going to be held accountable to like pitch in in the house and like start, you know, paying my dues when I lived at home and stuff. So I kind of made the decision of, okay, if I'm going to be like, you know, paying at my house, I might as well look into like what it would be like moving out on my own. However, I had a job where I wasn't really making too much money. I did my entire senior senior year online so that I could work and make money to hopefully move out. And so I spent all my time just like working to try and make that happen. But when the time came and I turned 18, I was getting really scared because I was like, I just didn't think I could do it. And I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate. I just didn't believe in myself at all. And like, not that my mom didn't believe in me. She was just like, you don't have to move out. Like, why are you stressing out about it? But like, it was my own, like, I don't know how to explain it. I just wanted that yeah. to feel that accomplishment of like doing it, you know, like yeah. I wanted to prove everybody wrong and be like, I can't do this. So I was looking at houses, but like in Arizona, especially it's very expensive. So I was like, it's probably not going to happen. Then one day Bryn calls me and she's like, Hey, like, I know you've been wanting to move out. Like, I found this house. Do you want to go look at it with me? Just for and gigs, right? <laughs> and we came and looked at this house. This was the first one we looked at. And yeah. I remember us touring it and just being like, oh, this is perfect. Like, this is it. This is our house, you know? And so I went home and kind of told my mom. And again, they were like, sure, like, yeah, like, yeah, like, sure, whatever. <laughs> and I'm sure if you guys have been keeping up, you know, Bryn and I, like, that was a very, both of our moms were like, you sure Great you want to move in with your best friend? Because, you know, that's very hit or miss. You could move in with your best friend. It could be great or it could be terrible, terrible. you know. But I feel like we've been through enough that, like, we kind of know how to handle it at this yeah. point. Like, we've been through enough fights that we're like, I think I know how to handle it at this point. But so anyways, long story short, we saw this house and I went home and was like, I'm going to make this happen. And I started saving all my money and doing all that I could. Finally had enough money for the down payment. And Bryn was like, all right, come on in. So her and our other roommate, Naomi, moved in a month before me. And then I moved in the month after. And here we are now a year later. It's our second year in this house. So yeah, honestly, I feel like because it was so difficult for me to get there, it's like such a good feeling once you finally do. And like my best advice would just be like, 
my shitty mindset did not help at no. all. Like you have to actually believe in yourself and you have to actually like make steps to make it happen. Otherwise, you're just going to be sitting there talking down to yourself and like nothing's going to change, you know? Yeah. Like you have to actually make steps to like make that actually happen, you know? Yeah. And I remember calling you and I was like, we have a third room. Like, yeah. and obviously my first choice would be you to like move in. And she was I would like, hope so. she's like, yeah, man, <laughs> like, I don't think I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. And I was like, no, you're going to do it. Yeah figure it out, like save every penny you have. Yeah. And then once you move out, just figure out, like, don't worry about how, how am I going to have, like, how is this going to work? Like you kind of just have to do it and yeah. figure it out as you go. Yeah. Honestly, which is like what I, yeah. what I did. Like yeah. every, I feel like everyone has that time where you kind of just have to just go for it yeah. and take the big leap and just like figure out. Yeah. And I know it seems very, very scary. And I know everyone has different situations, but I promise you in the end, it's like, feels so good to be able to say like, yeah, I I live by myself. I support myself. Like, and I think we actually talked about this before. Like we have a lot of friends that their parents still support them. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they don't have the responsibilities of paying their own bills and like paying their own car payment and Mm -hmm. your phone bill. Like that's adult shit. Like that's everything. Like we do everything on our own. And so a lot of the times, like, you know, we don't want to spend this extra money that's like not really necessary. Yeah. And so it's hard not to get jealous of those people. I was just going to say, it's it's easy to look at them and be like, I want that life. But at the same time, it's even more rewarding when you do it yourself. And not to say that like that's, you know, we all have different experiences. Yeah. And if your parents support you, great, like good for you. It's not a bad thing. It's just, it's it's definitely easy to look at them and be like, yeah, oh, that'd be so much easier. Yeah. But no, it feels good to be able to like do it all on yeah. your own. Absolutely. So like to anyone out there that's thinking like, I don't know if I can do it by myself. I promise you, you, you can. can. Yeah. <laughs> like at it's, least try. Yeah. You know? And it might be hard and you might have some bumps in the road, mm-hmm. but you'll be able to do it. Yeah. You know? And like right before I moved out, I like, I think when we viewed this house, I didn't have a car either. Like I was so dependent on my mom and, you know, my family and my home life that it was like, it's just not possible. Yeah, it so seemed impossible. I was very blessed to have my mom's support and she you know once I said I wanted to move out she was like you know we got to get a car we got to do this and like I had so much savings that I was like it was just scary being like dropping savings on my car and then moving out and having a blank slate is like so scary yeah, no, totally. so I had to I bought my car and then I got I didn't get my second job until I moved in here but like it all just kind of went how it was supposed to and like looking back I wish I could tell that Kelsey like it's gonna work out it's gonna be fine yeah. like I remember a week or two right before I moved in, I just spent my savings on my car and then I had to pay these like bills for my car and I was just so scared. And I remember bawling being like, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to yeah. happen. Like, and I have this video of me being like, I was so close, like, yeah. and I'm not going to do it. And I called Bryn and Bryn was like, get your shit together. It's going to happen. Yeah, I was like, you can take a it. breather. But it's, I don't know what it was. I just like really didn't think it would happen for me. And but like I said, it feels great now that I actually did. And like having such good like roommates and people around me like definitely helped. Like having a friend that actually believed in me and was like, stop <laughs> and just do it. Like, you Yeah. Know? And I don't know if you've listened to any of our other podcasts, but Kelsey and I talked about before like our past like friendship issues, because when you're younger and like whatever, you're just like dumb and like yeah. naive and we just two like, headstrong people yeah we just like That's argue all the time when we were in high school and we have like funny stories about it yeah but and so when we moved in together my mom was like you guys need to like make my a mom pact. was like contract <laughs> now yeah like. so I literally typed up a contract yeah. it's literally on my laptop like we both signed it like imagine like I remember your mom was like imagine you're in the worst fight of your life yeah And when it comes down to it and you're living under the same roof and you have to see each other every day, like you can't just like, you know, let it go to shit and then be miserable because I've had bad roommate experiences before and I don't wish that upon anyone. Like, especially under your own uh, roof, like where you're paying to be and you're not happy. That's like, that's terrible. Like I've had some tear, like terrible roommate stories. Like I've had roommates that just like, would embarrass me in front of my friends. And I, that's just terrible. Like I would never want anyone to feel like that. And so 
we've had our ups and downs living together, but it's never gone to but the I point like, where it's like, I want to move out. Like that's, yeah. but like even but growing like, up with your family, like you fight with your sisters like that. And like, yeah. you're like my sister. So okay. we always just like get over it and it's fine. It's always just like, how deep really is this? Like, yeah. It's not that deep. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I also have step siblings. So I feel like that's a little bit of the roommate experience that like tested me a little that's bit. That's so true. Because I had three kids, three teenagers just move in with me one random day. And I was like, you know, that's a lot coming from three kids and then three more kids come together. Like it was definitely a testy experience. And I remember just, you know, living under your your own roof and having these fights or experiences like we were all different people and trying to get along. And like, I feel like that helped me a lot moving in here because I already know Bryn. I like already know Naomi. So like it was definitely easier. But if you haven't had that experience it's definitely going to be like a wake-up call when you move in with your friends being like just communication is so important yeah be careful sometimes we can be bad with it you have to be careful oh yeah choose wisely definitely and like i feel so bad for people who have to share a dorm with a stranger like i I could could not do that ever live in a dorm Mm -mm. ever like that's the size size of my room sharing it with another person i couldn't do that we have people like so we live in tempe which is like a college town obviously Mm-hmm. and it's like ASU if you don't know and like we pay the same amount for our house that like some of our friends do for like dorms and apartments yeah. like that's it's like the tiniest little yeah and like granted we don't have that much room but like we enjoy just having our little house like to ourselves like people come over they're like you have a house yeah it's like, yeah <laughs> I don't think I could do an apartment though so maybe yeah. not an apartment I don't know but I also am afraid of Jeffrey Dahmer coming and killing me in an apartment. So, <laughs> no, Kelsey and our other roommate Naomi, we bring her up for a lot. Maybe she should be on the podcast. Naomi She's so should funny. make a guest appearance. She's literally the best. But they're like super, like weird about like like murderers and like people breaking okay, into our house. And watch, I'm just like not like at yeah. all. We watch crime shows all day long. That's another good like topic. I don't know if anybody can relate or if I'm just a freak, <laughs> but. When I first moved in, doing things alone was so scary. Like when I moved or when I was living at my mom's house and like I had to go to the store by myself, it was an easy task. But then living on my own, driving to the store by myself was so scary. And like, I don't even know why it wasn't because of killers. It wasn't because of anything specific. I just was so scared and like embarrassed of myself. Like, I don't know what it, what it was. She still asks me to go to the store with her to this day. (laughs) Walking from my car to the front door, like panic attack for no reason and it's just it's just this like idea of like oh I'm I'm on my own now like Naomi made a good point the other day she was like if I'm like by myself and like let's say I died in my sleep like nobody would find me I'm, like <laughs> that's so true that's so weird like guys I went from living with five siblings to just like solo when they're not here you know yeah so it's so weird like I've never been alone before like it's just so weird it is weird like I don't think a lot of people like mention how weird it is when you live out of state from your family so like my family lives all the way across the country so I'm in Arizona they're in North Carolina which that's like a five-hour flight like it's very far and so it is sad when like holidays come around Mm -hmm. um that's why I always invite you to like my family stuff because I'm like my family loves you yeah (laughs) and like it is weird to like not live with your like siblings anymore or like not be able to just like go to your mom and like ask her something right and so I think that is something that you kind of have to prepare for like take in all those moments you have with your family and hang out with your sister and have a good relationship with them and I know everyone's situations are different but if you're like if you're lucky enough to have that with your family, because mm-hmm. I feel like I'm very blessed to have that with my family. Yeah. Um, I feel like I kind of took some of those moments for granted and it makes me sad looking back on it. Cause I wish that I would have not stayed in my room all day. And mm-hmm. I wish I would have like gone downstairs and like hung yeah. out with my mom more when I could, Absolutely, because yeah. now that I'm like out of that and now that I'm like on my own, it is a little bit weird to not be able to just like see my sister every day. Yeah. Like I literally see them like, how like three four times a year like that's so weird and like isn't it weird when I don't know like I live semi-close to my family and like even when I go there like once a month I look at my little sister and I'm like she looks so different every time and it's weird because I used to live with her so I saw her every day and now that I see her randomly it's like why are you so tall like what happened (laughs) where did you go like what happened like (laughs) 
And I, I feel like right before I moved out, we also dealt with a loss in my family. And so personally, I feel like it was extra hard leaving them because I felt like I was just leaving them like stranded and not like being there for my family. But at times I feel like it's okay to be a little selfish and prioritizing myself and trying to make my goals come true because for the longest time I was like, oh, I can't do it because I can't leave my sister. Like, I don't think she even understands the amount of stress I went through thinking about leaving her. I don't know. It's just like so scary. And she doesn't even call me. She doesn't even really care. But I always sit here and I'm like, I want to be there for her. I want to be her like support system and she could care fucking less. (laughs) She's, she's young and my sister is like that too. Yeah. So, but I've always said like, I've always said that like this age in your life, like after high school, whether you're going to college or whether you want to take a gap year and travel, like anything you decide to do, like, I feel like, like out of high school until you're like 25, 26, like whenever you want to settle down and like pick a place to live for a while, like those are your years in your life to be selfish. Like Absolutely. my mom always told me that. And it's not a bad thing. Like Mm -hmm. if let's say, for example, like you're in a relationship and this guy is holding you back, he wants to stay in your hometown and you want to go live your life, go do it because I promise you, you will regret it if you don't. Mm -hmm. And I know I have to look back. Yeah. What if? Yeah. Like this is your time to figure out like who you are as a person, like who you want in a partner, where you want to live, what you want to do. And I feel like you're put under so much pressure, especially in like your senior year. Like if you went to a public high school, they like really pressure you to go to college. What are you doing? What's your plan? What's your this? Like, and it's like, you should have no idea what you really want to do until you're like, I would personally, I think like 24, 25, like there's no way you would know it. 18 years old change their minds. Like most people change their majors halfway through their year. Most people like move colleges and move towns. And like, I feel like, the best way to learn is to experience. Yeah. So like you won't know until you try. Like I had to take that leap of faith to really find out. Cause like worst case scenario, what happens? I move back into my mom's house. Like, you know, I don't know. I feel like just don't be afraid to try because there's no growing and just staying right in your comfort zone. Agree. You know? And like, just like try new things. Like for example, this podcast, it's actually a funny story. So I was in North Carolina visiting my family, actually. This was, I want to say, almost two years ago. Yeah. A year and a half ago, maybe. And it was literally like 3 a.m. And I was just in bed. And I was sitting there and I was like, I want to do something with my life that I love to do. Mm -hmm. I want to wake up and do every day. And I love being a teacher. Don't get me wrong. But if I'm being honest, I don't want to do that the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Like, I love it. And I could see myself doing it probably as like a side thing, like, Mm -hmm. you know, because I love it. Dances will always be a part of my life. But I was laying there and I was like, oh, like I need, I want to do something that is like, I want people to listen to me and I want to be a good role model to people. And so I texted Kelsey at like 3 a.m. And I was like, dude, we should start a podcast. And she's like, uh, okay. Like, I was like down, but like how? (laughs) Yeah. She's like, how? Like, I don't even know where to start. Yeah. And that night I ordered literally this equipment that we still use to this day. Yep. I ordered the equipment. We came up with a name. Our old name used to be Double Take and we've just like rebranded since then. But, and I wrote down all this stuff that we need to do. I wrote down ideas. And then when I came back to Arizona and we moved in together, we just like started this as a fun thing. Like it really was just like something we did on our own. Yeah. And now we're so thankful for Pierce because they've really they helped really, us just, like, yeah. grow. And like you guys are obviously the best ever. And now I can like really see myself doing this. Like yeah. I love doing this. Yeah. And so that's just like one example of like, it was clearly out of my comfort zone. Like I had no idea how to start this. Like yeah. this was like beyond what I thought that I could do. Yeah. And now that we're actually doing it, it feels so possible. It feels so surreal. Yeah. yeah and I feel like looking into the future, like I could just see this going pretty far and like it couldn't happen without you guys listening and watching and so just like you know try something new like you never ever know until you try absolutely like it's just crazy to see how much we've grown independently as people but also like our friendship growing like it's just crazy because like 15 year old Kelsey and Brynn would have never thought when we were fighting at school and like (laughs) no all that drama was happening I would have never thought I'd be here now but like I'm so glad that I am And I just like, 
I'm really happy with like life and where I'm at right now. Like granted, obviously there's big bumps in the road and I feel like there's definitely times where I feel like I've made the wrong choice or I feel like I'm doing something wrong. And I just have to sit there and remind myself to have a good mindset and like having people I can go to and like vent to and just like get it off my chest and like, I don't know, just like change your mindset and believe in yourself and actually try new things and do it because it's such a waste of time. I look back at me complaining, being like, stop, like you can. Yeah. And I feel like being like independent is like such a pressure word. Yeah. Like you have to be independent by blah, 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 blah. And like, you kind of just have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I gave myself the goal of, oh, when I turn 18, like I want to move out, but you don't have to do that. People, you can live at your house as long as you need. And I know there are some people that, you know, we all have different experiences and there's some people that have to move out at 18 or younger or whatever the case is. And I just think that you need to find people that you can surround yourself with that'll lift you up and help you out. And, you know, put all your good vibes and energy out into existence and it will happen. I always think that I'm like, if Just whenever I think there. negative or anything, I'm like, stop it. Like, yeah. because if you she'll tell me that she'll yell at me, I'll be like, Bryn, I can't do it. She's like, well, if you say that, then you're not going to do I it. Know, I, like, always, yeah. like, I feel like I always put you in check a little. Oh yeah. No, I'm not allowed to have the town mindset at all. Not allowed. <laughs> like even today before we started the podcast, she was like, my hair looks so bad. Blah, blah, blah. And I was She's like, like, stop. Kelsey, I like it. Literally stop it. And then she goes, she was like, can I rewet it? And will you redo it? I was like, honestly, I don't want to do no. that. So it looks fine. So I think you're fine. Just like <laughs> figure it out and you're fine. Yeah. So just change your mindset. Don't be a Kelsey, be a Bryn. <laughs> no. you know I, mean? <laughs> I feel like you've like grown a lot though, since you've moved out. Oh yeah. Like I, I like knew I... in my heart, I was like, she needs to move out. Mm-hmm. She needs to, you know, you need to do this on your own. And I feel like it was really good for you. Yeah. And I feel like. I'm kind of afraid to talk about this, but like, obviously there's a lot of people that experience maybe rough relationships with family members. And my mom and I are very similar, like very similar people. And so I feel like we've always been best friends, but we also fight like best friends. And so I really just wanted that relationship with with my mom where we could be friends and like not fight anymore. And so I really felt like if I moved out, you know, our relationship could be better and different and like I feel like that was a a very big reason why I moved out because I love my mom so much like we were just butting heads a lot and over little stuff that we just didn't need to fight about and Mm -hmm. now more than ever I feel like our relationship has definitely grown because we just like know each other as people and it's not like yeah no I'd agree with that but I love my mom more than anything in this world don't get me wrong it's just you know naturally I feel like a lot of people go through that you either fight with a sibling or your mom or your dad or whoever yeah. and it just definitely took moving out to grow that relationship and my mindset was really bad and I feel like I'm a whole new person than I was when I moved no out. I think you are too new person like I feel like when you first moved out you were very like I don't know like you just have a different energy to you yeah. like you seemed very like walking on eggshells like stressed and like mm-hmm. anxious and it is crazy to think that Kelsey went from like moving out, like stressing about money, like working two jobs. And now like you're about to quit your day job and like you're Mm. able to just do your night job and like just do this. Like you Mm. like that. You never would have thought that would happen Mm. a a one year ago. No. Like literally a year ago. Exactly. Like I was so dependent on like, I don't know. I just am such a people pleaser too. That's like my biggest problem. So when I first moved in, I was definitely always scared to like make you or Naomi mad like just because like I said going from having all these siblings and you're always fighting with your siblings like fighting with my mom and like that's the last thing I wanted here I just wanted like peace and like good vibes and so I was always like so scared to make you guys mad and I didn't want to like I don't know just like crazy stuff like that and then now it's just it's not that deep no it's it's really not and I'm just like I feel like in the roommate situation I'm just like a very blunt like person I guess like if something's bothering me I'll just be like hey like can we talk about this? Like whatever. And Naomi and I are working on that. Yeah. And you, <laughs> you've gotten better. She really yeah. used to not be like that. And so little things would bother her and I'd have zero clue just mm-hmm. because she wouldn't tell me. And so then she used to have all these like built up emotions mm-hmm. and then it would just like all come out one day. And I'm like, whoa, yeah. Like, wait when, a second. <laughs> if you have I somebody, if I could have had somebody tell me this advice when I was younger, my life would have been changed. If you have a problem with something or someone if you don't tell them that, that's on you. That's 100% on you because 
especially I had to remind myself like little things like people don't mean any harm and they don't mean any animosity. Like yeah, nobody's walking around trying to piss you off or make you mad. And so well, some if there's do. some, <laughs> well, <laughs> they're just going to hate that. <laughs> but like, if you don't hold somebody accountable for something you feel like hurts you, then that's a hundred percent on you and they can't grow. And, and if you go to somebody with a problem or like an issue respectfully and they <laughs> come back at you with like, that's not true. Or like, you can't feel that way. Maybe you're surrounding yourself with the wrong people because you want to be in a situation where you can come to somebody and be like, you know what? Like this kind of sucked and they don't have to agree. Yeah. But like you need to just have that positive communication. I feel like we even like if there's anything wrong, like we'll even like go to lunch and sit down and talk about it. And that changes the game because people can't read your mind. They don't know how you feel and they are just doing them and you're just doing you everybody's world revol- revolves around themselves. They don't actually think about you, believe yeah, it or not. Yeah, believe it or not, because everybody thinks about I think themselves. everyone thinks about me all the time, no. but no one does. Nobody, nobody, <laughs> nobody cares fuck. what I do, what I look like. Like, everybody it doesn't matter. Their, especially at our age, everybody's worrying about their own problems and their own things. Yeah. Prioritize yourself and communicate yeah. your problem. We've had plenty of course. like, I can't read your mind conversations. Yeah. And I know as awkward or as difficult as those conversations can be, mm-hmm. like, It just has to be done. No matter if it's a roommate, like I feel like especially roommates though, just because everybody's raised differently and Mm -hmm. everybody, yeah, everybody just like has their own way of cleaning, has their own way of going about things, has their own way of talking to people. Like, and I feel like a lot of time personalities can clash, Mm -hmm. which is hard and it can be like a struggle, struggle bus, (laughs) struggle bus, struggle city, but you just have to like talk it out and. I'm just glad that like my roommates, obviously we're like best friends. So like makes it, makes it a little it easier, bit easier, yeah. but yeah, if you guys need any roommate advice, like I feel like we can give pretty good yeah. advice because I've had bad roommates and I've had really good roommates. So. Yeah. Oh, would you consider me a really good one? I, I guess like oh. a mid. <laughs> uh. <laughs> no, you're like a, a 9.5 out of 10. What's the point five? What do I, I need mean, to work a on? 10 out of 10 would be like my <laughs> husband. Oh, like five. you're like a nine. No, my five. husband would be like a five out of ten because oh. like you really love them, but like living with a man. Yeah. Disgusting. So speaking of, if you ever want to tell us your roommate situations, you can text us. Believe it or not. Yeah. Do you want to pull up the number? I was gonna say <laughs> I don't have it memorized yet. Wait for it. Wait for it. No, but on a real note, I appreciate you guys so much. We've been watching all the love on our last few podcasts, yeah. and it's making my heart like. So happy. And like our no favorite idea. thing is when you guys text us like stories and situations. Which then we get a peek into your yeah. lives and it's like so cool to see that people experience kind of the same stuff as it us is. or like crazy shit that we've never even heard of. Like, yeah, no, actually. <laughs> but the phone number is 310-742-0083. Perfect. Text us, please. Text us, which but. leads us to our next segment. I'm excited. We're going to answer your questions now. Annika from Atlanta, Georgia. What's the worst part and best part of living together? Oh, okay. I'll go first. I think the best part is just like always having someone to go do stuff with. Mm -hmm. Like obviously like going to the mall is boring by yourself. Yeah, right. I would rather go with you. Getting gas, boring. And like one of my favorite parts is at night like because we all work during the day and like we never really see each other yeah. and then at night we all just come home and we all just like sit and talk about our days like mm-hmm. that's like some of my favorite memories yeah. we have is just you know having like especially your best friends around all the time like it's literally a never-ending sleepover that's what i was saying the other day like, like always it just it's feels so like fun the amount of stuff we do like we call we make something called a mega bed where we bring all three of our mattresses into the living room and move our couches out yeah. of the way and then watch a movie. That's so fun. Yeah, just like little things like that. Like just to have like fun people around and like yeah. your best friends around and just like experiencing things together and making those core memories is just really fun. Yeah. But I think the worst part, I don't know. I'm trying to think. <laughs> the worst know. part is like In the beginning, I think, like, I don't really think this anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, in the beginning, we all just, like, didn't know how we all, like... Didn't know how to read each other yet? Like... What's the word? We didn't know how we all, like, what, like, worked? What's... I'm looking for a different word. We didn't know how each other, like, function and, like... Function. How we, like, come together. Yeah, we didn't know how each other, like, function very well. So, like, like, 
even cleaning wise, like functioning that way or like even little things like parking your car in the driveway. Right. Like just like little things when you move in with people and you're not used to it yet will like really piss you off. Yeah. But we've all like gotten in the in our little I'm routine. like blinking on routine. routine. Yeah. Jeez. That's your girl. We've all like gone our routine now together and like we know how to like approach each other because at first I feel like we were scared to approach each other about things. Yeah, it definitely took time. Yeah, but now sure. it's like so easy and like yeah. I wake up every day and it's just like so fun. Yeah, I feel like now more than ever we're good at communicating, but I would kind of say the same. I feel like my favorite part of living with each other is that no matter what, like for example, I came home the other night and I was really emotional because there was just stuff, you know. Yeah. And so I came home really emotional and I was like thinking to myself, like, okay, I need to get my act together before I go home because that's like habit. Like yeah. Growing up, I yeah, always like just, had to get my act together yeah. before I came home. And like my act was not together when I came home. And so I walked through the front door and Bryn just looks at me like this. Gives her hug. Arms open. <laughs> and like that's such like a special thing to me because I just enjoy being around people that can lift me up. And like Naomi's the funniest human being on planet Earth. Like, she's so <laughs> funny and just so like, a, like I know she has her issues and goes through stuff like everybody else. But to me, she's just always happy go lucky girl. Like, yeah, you never know. And so no matter what, when I come home, like these people just make me so happy yeah. no matter what I'm going through. I like look forward to coming home. Oh, yeah. You know, like when I come home and there's no cars here, I'm like, oh, sad. I know. <laughs> I'm coming home, like, and so that's definitely my favorite part, just being around people that lift me up and I feel like the worst part is definitely just in the beginning more than now, just whenever there was an issue and you could just feel the tension in the air, but nobody's talking about it. But that's hasn't happened in so long because yeah. I feel like we finally learned each other and understand like just how we cope. Because as much as Brynn and I are friends, like you really don't know how somebody lives through their day to day life. And same with Naomi, like we weren't best friends when we moved in. So it was a matter of like learning each other and, you know, what works best in her and I shared a bathroom and just stuff like that was definitely difficult, but I'm so glad that we are where we are right now because yeah, it's too. so different me and too. I'm so happy with it all. But me anyways, too. that was a long answer. So next question. Okay. I'm excited. Okay. Greta from Waterloo, Iowa asks, I moved in with my bestie and it started to put a strain on our friendship. Have you guys struggled to balance being besties and roomies? Give us a specific example or story. Absolutely. We have. Do you want me to go first? Sure, you can go first. I feel like, like we were talking about earlier, I don't even remember what it was about, but there was something wrong. I don't even know, but it was to the point where we were like, let's go to lunch and like talk about it because we were just in a rut of not really talking to each other for like a week. We were just like silent. Yeah. And just, but at the same time, sorry, off tracking, but there's so many ups and downs when you're living with your friends. Sometimes you guys are going to be really close. Sometimes, you know, there's times where people want yeah. alone time. We were or just whatever. talking about this. Yeah. Like, I feel like we go through phases of being really close to doing everything. Yeah. And then there'll be a couple weeks where we just kind of do our own thing and yeah. we still hang out, but it's yeah. not like every day, which it's not even like we mean to. It just like happens, yeah. which is natural. And I think it's really good for us. Yeah. But I, it, I think the time, the time you're talking about, like, I'm I'm obviously best friends with Naomi and then I'm yeah. also best friends with you and like mm. but now you and Naomi are close like yeah. at first it wasn't like that but there was like a time period where Naomi and I were on we were like really practicing a lot for our dance team yeah. and so I felt like you kind of felt a little bit left out yeah. it I wasn't was even on purpose you know like, what I mean yeah. and so yeah Kelsey sometimes tends to like overthink situations like thinking that I was like like, yeah. I didn't mean to, like, you know, try to leave you out. It was yeah. just, like, what was happening. And so I'm glad that she took me to lunch and she just, like, sat me down and she was just telling me how she felt. And mm -hmm. I, like, totally understood. And then it just, like, takes, like, little things like that to just make sure that you're not, like, miscommunicating things. Right. And, like, if I would have just sat there and, like, swallowed that, then it would have just created more problems in my life. And yeah. instead, I was like, I need to actually be a fucking adult. And just express how I feel because I knew that they weren't intentionally doing anything. It just, I wanted, I just wanted to answer all my overthinking questions. And I feel like that's what you need to do with your friend. If you feel like it's off, yeah. ask or tell her, you know, X, Y, Z feels different. Like, is there a reason why? Or do you just need some alone time? Because I feel like the most beneficial thing when it comes to roommates is telling somebody, hey, I'm going through a lot. I need to be by myself. That's okay. totally fine. Yeah. Like that's, that yeah. should be okay. And if it's not accepted, then you probably need a new yeah. bestie. <laughs> so I think my advice to Greta 
is maybe just sit down with your bestie, have Mm -hmm. a chat with her, you know, maybe make a list in your phone that used to help me like just make little points that you want to bring up so you don't miss anything. Get it all off your chest, you know, tell, make sure she tells you how she feels as well. And don't get defensive. Don't get defensive, you know, just like hear each other out. And obviously you can't control how she's going to react. But, you you know, just try to be on the same level mentally and just figure it out. So that's my advice to her. I agree. All right. Next one. Annie from Miami. Miami. (laughs) Annie from Miami, Florida. What do you guys think of Alex Earl? Oh, I love her. I don't really think of her. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) I like, don't like, I, she said Alex Earl one day and I was like, who is that? She's like, What? And, like, shows me her page, but, like, I never see her videos or anything. I, I mean, stan Alex I think Earl. she's gorge and, like, do your thing, girl, but I don't really, like, see her or, like, what she's doing in her life. I love her. Like, I want to be friends with her. She's so cool. My TikTok is just, I guess, different. Yeah. It's like, I like how, like, she's, like, funny because she, like, does these, like, makeup videos. And yeah. I just, like, love makeup videos. Like, yeah. I watch those all day. Yeah. But then she'll, like, show other videos of her just being, like, plastered. And it's, like, yeah, so that funny. Is funny. Like, I love her. Yeah. I stand. I'm an Alex Earl stan. Callie from Youngstown, Ohio says, thoughts on rumors that Timothy Chalamet and Kylie Jenner are dating? I didn't even know that. Timothy Chalamet, isn't he dating Zendaya? No, that's, the that's Tom there. Holland. Oh, that one. Come on. I don't know, y'all. I don't <laughs> keep up with celebrities. Except that's for a Harry rumor? Styles. That would be a very odd rumor. That is a very... I, wait, Kylie Jenner? Yeah. She's dating Travis What's one of the Travises? <laughs> Travis something. Scott. Scott. They fully have a child together. They just posted kissing like a month ago. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. The um, Kardashians has- stick to their baby daddies. They don't <laughs> They don't steer off unless it's like a Kim and a Pete for a minute and then they go back to their baby daddies. If that rumor is true, I don't like that. Yeah, that's very weird. That would just, they, they just look like they don't go together. Kylie Jenner is like twice his size, respectfully. They ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine. <laughs> That's not supposed to be bad. I mean, like, taller. Like, Timothy's this tiny little, like, bean, and, like, Kylie Jenner's slim thick. You know what I mean? <laughs> Brie from... Somewhere. Let me see. <laughs> Ew, Claire. Ew, yeah, oh, Claire, we. Wait, no, that's not Washington. <laughs> that's Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Eau Claire. Eau Claire. Wis- Wisconsin? Is W.I. Oh, Wisconsin? Get some easier <laughs> towns, please. This is so... It's, o- it's, it's Eau Claire. Eau Claire. Wisconsin. <laughs> it's Wisconsin, right? Sure. Um, Isn't that the cheese, the cheese state? Wisco. Yeah, Wisconsin. Okay, anyways. That's the cheese state. What are your future <laughs> career goals slash plans? Oh, I love this question. I love this question, too. Um, I feel like I don't know, like exactly because i'm kind of just like taking it week by week day by day like figuring it out but like this podcast is like my number one priority yeah i love doing it it's so fun we look forward to doing it and we look forward to watching our podcast yeah too, if i out. could do this as a career like like that is so ideal agreed. so ideal agreed i feel like i haven't been so like set to my goals until now it took a lot of steering off the road and exploring other things to like finally find my passion. My passion is definitely teaching dance and definitely doing the pod. Like I, it's kind of cute because when I was younger, all my like preschool and kindergarten papers are like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And on everything, I always said like, I want to be a dance teacher. Cause that was just, I was a dancer. And so it was just like natural. But now that I'm actually doing it, I feel like it's fulfilling that like child in me. And like you said, it's definitely not a permanent thing. Like I don't see myself doing it forever and ever, but I'm very happy with where I'm at now. And this podcast is like, it's so crazy to think that we're actually doing it because I wanted to do it for so long. And when we talked about it, we're like, that could be so cool. Yeah. And if it wasn't for Pierce, like we're just in such a good place right now. And I want to continue to do this and I want to change people's lives with this podcast. I want, like we always say, we want to be that podcast for our younger selves, like a hundred percent. So definitely future goal is to have, big ass podcast yeah because I feel like I had this platform from such a young age and I never really had an opportunity to like use it to Mm -hmm. talk about my life or like share advice and stories and I'm like 
this is like the perfect thing to like do it on. Yeah. And if I could do this and, you know, continue doing it and to continue to like people be like, wow, like I've never heard anyone else say that because I've like looked through the comments and it literally like uh, makes me so happy when, you know, I see comments like yeah. this really helped me. Like I was really struggling with trauma from my old dance studio and like I've never heard anyone talk about it and it feels so good to have you know someone else experience it and, like yeah. even if I could make one person feel like that like That's that matters. is all that matters a know? lot of people especially in the dance world sugarcoat everything we are not sugarcoating anything we are giving you raw I will tea. out you I will don't, don't make me do it <laughs> no but and we love you guys and we love that you guys give us ideas for what you want to hear because then we feel like we're yes. giving you guys the advice that you need so if you guys have ideas for us to talk later, let us know. Please comment. Let us know what you want us to talk about. We have ideas for days, yeah. but it's all about y'all. What yeah. do you guys want to hear? That's all we're here for. We're yeah. only here to talk about things that you want to hear. So let us know. Yeah. And please subscribe so that you can be the first one to listen. <laughs> subscribe and turn those notifs on. We actually did the premiere for our most recent um, YouTube video coming out on Pierce Network. And it's just like, it's crazy because we did like, premiere and everything it was, it was fun. so I was, like, fun that. so you guys should come to the premiere with us because it's yeah, so fun it's really fun i feel like you guys should comment your biggest fear and why you're not doing whatever you want to do what's Agreed. stopping you what is stopping you comment and we will respond and say the fuck? do it <laughs> <laughs> no but actually yeah. but we love you guys and if it wasn't for you guys we couldn't have this amazing podcast so thank you guys for everything and subscribe follow us on our Instagram. Out of line Instagram. What's it called again? Out it's of called line XOXO. Out of line XOXO. And our TikTok is welcome to out of line. So you guys should follow us and watch all of our BTS because it's really funny. It is. And follow Pierced Media on TikTok and Instagram as well. Yeah, you can keep up with us. We do like a lot of, <laughs> we made like a funny couple of TikToks and I'm not even going to tell you them because yeah. they're, you just need to go watch because they're much. funny. You just need to see it. You'll see so. a whole other side of us. But yeah. But. Thank one you so much time. for sticking around. If you made it to the end. We love you. Love you the most. And one more time, if you want to text us, the phone number is 310-742-0083. So we will see you next week. Love you guys. Bye. Peace out. XOXO. I look like a homeless hobbit. That went so well. Did it not, Mick? Oh. <laughs>